Hi, welcome to the next in our series all about doing things differently. Today I want to talk about something a little bit controversial. I want to talk about specs. Now, I often joke with the guys in fixed spec that nobody gives a shit about specs. In fact, I've told many times that I need a neon light above my desk uh, to tell people, to remind us that that's how people feel about it. <clears throat> and the fact is that specs always get a really bad rap. Um, People think that this is just documentation. It's a dead end. Like, why do I need to invest any time and energy in it? And the reality is that if you don't tell your customer how to write to your API, well, it's kind of obvious that it, they can't really write to your API as efficiently and as quickly as you might actually want. And that's really why you need to invest in your API. So in this episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through some of the, um, the criticism that I have about specs, the concerns that people have about specs, and try to address some of them. So the number one thing to say is you cannot reverse engineer an API from a spec. I'm really always quite confused whenever I hear this from people, but I do hear it from people on a surprisingly regular basis. Typically, it tends to come from um, the older generation, let's call it that, the guys who are in the business uh, world and not necessarily in the IT world. Let's put it this way. If you could reverse engineer any algorithm from a spec, then Google would be out of business because they would be copied. Uh, Google never, ever, ever put out a product without putting out a well-documented API that anybody can access. And nobody is reverse engineering exactly what Google's doing. So your algorithm, I'm sure it is extremely smart. I'm sure that it's worth a lot of money, but do not fear that people can reverse engineer your spec just by reading your fixed API. It can't really happen. We need to just dispel that myth straight away. Now, I am not saying, however, that that means you should just give out your spec willy-nilly. That's absolutely also not the case. Um, what I'm saying is that you should just make sure that you invest in your spec, make sure that there are, uh, it's up to date and it's available to people who want it. Okay? It's really important that people understand what a spec actually is and what it can be used for. A spec for me is not a dead-end document. It's not about having a Word document that you hand out or email out to somebody uh, whenever you need it. A spec is something else, it's a contract. And importantly, as we move into the future world of electronic specifications, they are reusable contracts for other things. Now, what do I mean by that? Let me unpack that for one minute. When I say that a spec is reusable, I mean that it should be uh, not a dead end. It should be, um, you should be able to take that electronic spec and use it in multiple different places in your workflow. Um, so, for example, your fixed engine normally contains some config files. They might be XML files, they might be JSON files, it might be reading from a database or something like that. But nonetheless, your fixed engine needs certain bits of information in there to either parse message, validate the message, or perhaps even uh, set up the session level configurations. All of that type of information should actually be inside of an electronic spec. So the idea of having a spec that's written and is available to people not only to understand your API, but also configure their fix engine, that's what I mean by reusable. It's also the case that your QA systems probably have what is effect an electronic spec inside of them. How else would a QA system know what is a valid message and what is not a valid message for the purposes of testing whether the API behaves as you say it is? So an electronic spec should ideally be also plumbed into your QA test cycle. Same thing with certification. How can you ask somebody to send in a message and uh, validate that, that they're actually able to send in that message without understanding exactly what your API supports and what it doesn't support? And finally, all of those parsing tools that you might use today, the ones that take a raw fix log, split it up and decode it. Today, those things are normally done off the fixed standards, which you know that, that might get you 80% of the way there. But the remaining 20%, those are your differences. Those are your custom fields, custom enumerations, custom uh, messages or workflows. And those are the things that should really be captured inside of your electronic spec. So the idea of having a reusable spec, something that you invest in once, and that can now be reused across a variety of different um, uh, places in your workflow, that's the key important benefit of having these, these electronic specs. And it sets them apart really from the very legacy word-based documents that you might have seen in the past, the ones which just sit on a shelf and quickly get out of date. Those ones have very limited value because you can't do anything with them. Electronic specs are different. Um, they are reusable and that's important. The second key thing to think about uh, 
with specifications generally is that specs should be considered to be a contract. It's supposed to tell the customer, here's what you can do in my API. Here's everything that you can uh, possibly use. Here's everything that I'm supporting. And if the customer says, I can't support something inside of that contract, well, actually what you should be doing if you really want to help your customer is remove it from scope. So why, why would we do that? Surely that means that we're going to end up with one spec per customer. Well, yes, you might. And if you're a large bank today who's actually using transformations on a routine basis to get customers connected up to your API, you will know what that means because you're probably in that situation already. But a contract is really, really important. And if you, if you bear with me one second and just kind of go through the thought process of what you get, what the benefits of having a customer-specific contract out there, it's, it's, it becomes really important when you start thinking about the regression nature and the customer impact nature of, of this. So you're doing a, a new release, for example, and you're adding a new piece of functionality to your API. That means that there's a change to uh, existing messages, perhaps there's some new fields, perhaps there's some enumerations. There's something that's going to change in that API. One of the biggest challenges that firms have today whenever they're making a release is understanding what the impact of that release actually is. Am I going to break any customer's implementations? Which customers do I need to go to to encourage them to upgrade? And how much do I need to recertify them to make sure that they can actually do that upgrade safely? If you actually had a contract that defined exactly what each customer is capable of, that impact assessment could be automated. Today it isn't. Why? Because there's one Word document, might be out of date, but there's one Word document that satisfies everybody and we're not in that world of customer contracts. So the idea of understanding impact is really important. It's also important from a support perspective. So if your production support guys, for example, pick up that there's something going uh, wrong with a particular customer's um, uh, fixed session, then they can go to the contract, they can understand exactly what was agreed and how it was agreed. Now this contrasts quite sharply with the way that these transformations are built today inside of software vendors and inside of banks, where you know, I agreed with John while he was doing his implementation that I would default this value. And that's, that's awesome because that's noted in my email inbox somewhere um, or on a scrap of paper that I've subsequently lost. So tracking of these customer overrides and, and transformations becomes a real problem in the real world. And actually, if those things were captured inside of a customer specific spec as a contract, then everybody could understand it right from your production support guys all the way to the guys who are trying to do uh, customer upgrades. All right, we talked about uh, easing migration as well. So identifying exactly what needs to move from one place to another. And this is certainly true if you ever wanted to change your fix engine, which is one of the biggest and most difficult fix uh, projects that there actually is to pick up um, all of your customer sessions and move them over to a new uh, session, uh, a new fix engine infrastructure. How do I work out what transformations are applied in production to one session? And how do I replicate those somewhere else? If all of those transformations were captured electronically inside of a customer specific spec as a contract, that process is much easier. And similarly, replaying uh, customer log files and theoretically manipulating logs against uh, a particular customer, all of that stuff can now be automated with a customer specific spec. Finally, one, th one uh, thing to touch on in terms of customer specific specs is helping your customers, the impact that this actually has on your customers. Customers are busy. We know that. We know that the software vendors are always under far more pressure um, to make changes and keep up to date with uh, upgrades than they have time for. They just don't have the resources for them. And so if you find time and time again that you're being pushed to the back of the queue, people aren't doing your upgrades as fast as you want them to, this is your opportunity to actually help customers and, and to give them the information that you need, they need to be able to do the, the change faster. So what do I mean by that in a practical sense? Well, if you actually had a customer specific spec, so you know that when FlexTrade are connecting to this particular API, this is the complete set of functionality that they have certified against, removing all of the noise, all of the fields and enumerations that they're not actually currently sending to you. Well, if you now know that my, my upgrade uh, adds these fields, but they're fields that FlexTrade doesn't use, well, you can go to FlexTrade and say, congratulations, there's nothing for you to actually do in this particular upgrade. Or 
if it, it's impacting a, a piece of functionality that they have actually certified for, you can go back and give them very, very precise requirements saying, you've got this particular field, it's going to change in this way. We need you to make this change, please. It saves them a huge amount of time and energy going through the business analysis process of understanding exactly what's changed in your API, which means that it's much easier for them to make that change and you're more likely to get it scheduled in. So customers keep up with your functional improvements much faster if you just develop a customer specific spec. Now, I don't want to I don't want to downplay the amount of uh, time and energy involved in maintaining customer specific specs or maintaining uh, electronic specifications. We'll talk later on in the series about some tools to help you get towards that Nevada of um, electronic specs. But for the time being, for the purposes of this episode, what I really just want to emphasize to you is that there is a really serious benefits to moving to, to, towards electronic specifications and in particular customer specific electronic specifications. You really should be thinking about this inside of your firm now and thinking about how you can move to that more integrated way because it'll just allow your entire process to become far more automated uh, in the future. So we're going to talk uh, in later episodes about some of the electronic specification formats that are out there. Uh, we're going to talk, touch on the new Fix Orchestra uh, uh, format from the Fixed Trading community. We're also going to touch on the FinSpec format, which is from uh, FixSpec. We've uh, open sourced that up on GitHub, so you can go and check it out on there. We're going to compare and contrast them, see which ones can actually help you and work out exactly how, it can, how you can move from where you are today towards that more electronic future. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions about electronic specs or customer specific specs, if you want to give us any feedback, please leave them in the comments section below. We really do want to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to the series and keep up to date with all of the tips and tricks as we broadcast. Thanks for watching.